this is the new year that the Lord has given us. And we who have been spared to see it, rejoice and are glad in it, for we stand on the threshold of new possibilities and opportunities. As a country, we were able to accomplish much in 2018. Our economy continued recovery and entered the growth phase. We have established a flexible exchange rate and recorded low inflation. Business and consumer confidence remain high. Record high levels of employment, including youth employment, reduction in absolute poverty, rapid expansion in industries such as business process outsourcing, mining, tourism, and logistics. Record number of infrastructure projects, including the Mandela Highway Improvement Project, Constant Spring Road, Three Miles, Ferris to McPhee, and many more. Record number of housing starts and developments through the National Housing Trust and the Housing Agency of Jamaica. Major gains in improving safety and security in the country, which resulted in a 22% reduction in murders for 2018. All these accomplishments were the result of skillful implementation of a strategic plan to transform Jamaica into a modern, peaceful, and prosperous society. We cannot and will not slow our pace. Much remains to be done. Peace and public safety continue to be an area of priority focus for the government. Last year, we implemented two zones of special operations, which made significant strides in crime reduction in the targeted communities. By design, we place emphasis on community development, including infrastructure development, and making government services available to the communities. This year, we will increase the number of communities benefiting under the zones of special operations. We invoked emergency powers in some areas of Jamaica where crime was over and above the capacity of normal policing to address. These measures have yielded appreciable results. For the first time in Jamaica's history, the government has deployed force without violence. Citizens have embraced the security forces and seeds of a new trust relationship between both have been planted. More than that, however, also for the first time, the whole of government has been mobilized in a strategic framework to address issues of crime and violence. Today, the statistics tell us that murders are down 22%. But ordinary Jamaicans tell me that the measures have saved the lives of their brothers and sisters and their children. More than 350 persons are alive today by virtue of these measures. The government will continue its strategic implementation of Plan Secure Jamaica, using all resources, ways, and means which are firmly within the boundaries of the law to continue reducing the crime rate. Our objective is to see a massive, sustained decrease in murders, bringing us to below the global homicide rate of 6 per 100,000. For most Jamaicans, having experienced murder rates as high as 10 times the global average for such a long time, this may seem incredulous, but Jamaica has the capacity to do it. We have proven what works. What we have learned from this last decade of crime fighting is that political unity around the proven measures and the financial commitment by the government are critical for successful and sustained outcomes. The government this year will intensify its outreach to the opposition to build political unity around the crime plan. We will also continue to make significant investments in the retooling, training, and capacity building of our security forces. As we progress in our crime fighting and peace building strategy, it is clear that greater attention needs to be paid to the socio-emotional considerations. Violence, as a means of resolving conflict, has become far too accepted as the norm. A significant percentage of our murders are as a result of random acts of violence and domestic and intimate partner disputes. This month, I will name the National Commission on Violence, which will be tasked with examining our culture of violence and making far-reaching recommendations to stimulate behavior change. Violence is the cancer that has destroyed families and communities. Let's get to the heart of the matter. On the economic front, in the upcoming fiscal year, Jamaica is projected to have a debt-to-GDP ratio of just below 100%.
a significant reduction having been as high as 140%. This will create the fiscal space for government to undertake greater expenditure on human and social services. Additionally, the government will be packaging and bringing to market several public sector assets for sale on the Jamaica Stock Exchange, the first of which will be Wigton Wind Farm Limited. This is in keeping with government's policy of creating an ownership economy, giving average Jamaicans the opportunity to own shares in some of Jamaica's most profitable enterprises. Another element of the ownership economy is assisting Jamaicans to acquire decent and affordable housing, recognizing that the most important asset for any Jamaican is their own home. In addition to the work of the National Housing Trust, the Housing Agency of Jamaica, and private developers, this year, government will begin implementation of the social housing component of the HOPE program. Through this modality, the government will seek to improve and regularize the housing stock and living conditions of the most vulnerable Jamaicans, assisting them to realize the value in real estate. As Jamaica recovers and grows within the context of climate change and a globalized world, resilience building strategies must be mainstreamed in all government endeavors so that we are better able to recover from crises, shocks, and natural disasters. This is particularly the case considering that in November this year, Jamaica will graduate from its IMF program. In this post-IMF era, government will be required to undertake greater forward planning, deeper analysis of policies and targets, greater assessment of risks, and a greater commitment to discipline in the implementation of our programs. Citizens of Jamaica can be assured that your government will act responsibly and wisely to build on the gains made through years of sacrifice. Government is strengthening our central bank, establishing a fiscal council, and reducing the number of public sector entities to minimize exposure to fiscal risks. Equally, through creative financial mechanisms such as catastrophe bonds, we are ensuring speedy recovery from natural disasters. More so, we are seeking to build resilience in our civil infrastructure and the capital works that are being undertaken throughout the country. As we place greater emphasis on environmental preservation, I believe in the old saying, cleanliness is next to godliness. This year, a key focus of the government is to make Jamaica clean. Again, we have committed to increasing the number of compactor trucks for garbage collection. Importantly, aspects of the ban on plastics, which affects straws, single-use shopping bags, as well as expanded polystyrene containers, start today. Later this year, we will introduce the deposit refund scheme to tackle plastic bottles and unveil a plan to remove all old tires from landfills across Jamaica. These are crucial steps to preserve our environment. Keeping Jamaica clean is not just the responsibility of the government. It is the responsibility of every citizen, every household, and every business. My Jamaican family, great things are happening. There is a real sense of buoyancy, hope, and optimism. Jamaica is pressing ahead in the right direction. It is often said that the new year is a time for introspection, reflection, and change. Let us seize the newness of this year to plant the seeds of peace and love so that they may flourish as the year progresses. Let us turn away from aggression in our speech and action. Let us be guided by the principles of care and compassion for one another. A new Jamaica is emerging. Let us build this new Jamaica that we can all be proud of. Together, we can do it. I wish for all my Jamaican brothers and sisters a happy, peaceful, and prosperous 2019.